Fast Eddie Constantine, ProMMA.info on IBN Sports. And we are here with a legend in the combat sports world with Al Bernstein. Al, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be with you guys. I'm happy to be Kate's side for changes to the ringside. This will be fun. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Your viewpoint's going to be a little different looking through the chain link. It really is. You know, it's a funny thing about this. And of course, when I come here to do uh, this sport, I'm always hosting as opposed to doing color commentary, although a lot of times I host boxing shows as well. So you're here for a different kind of a function, but you're still very invested in the strategy of what's going on and everything. And you're right. Even looking through the cage gives you a different perspective than when you're ringside. Absolutely. And, and uh, let's talk about perspective a little bit. Again, you're here to do the commentating and the fans watching are going to be hearing your voice. How important is it to you to be impartial when calling an event? Well, I think that's whatever the sport you're doing, that's a paramount. You know, and in these kind of sports where uh, there's, there's judging that goes on and where there isn't a precise way of determining who did well. You know, if it's a baseball game, you know, if somebody hits a home run, whether it's a wind-blown homer or not, it's one run, football, six points, basketball, two, et cetera. In these sports, some, you know, there's an element, a gray area for sure. So it's vitally important that you, you, you be fair. And the way I always do it, whether I'm hosting an event or if I'm doing color is, I always try to take a second to step back and say to myself, if I was listening at home, would I think we're driving this train more in favor of one guy or the other? Uh, now, sometimes somebody's doing very well, and you want to say that, and somebody's not doing very well. But when it's in that gray area, I literally check myself and say, did I say something about fighter A or a little earlier in this round that would, would counteract what I just said about fighter B? I literally try and balance it that way. Thank you for that, first of all. That's so important because, again, Sometimes it's overlooked the importance that you have on an event oh, yeah. and, and the influence you have with so many new fans and so many people tuning in for the first time and you're going to sway how they see the fight. Absolutely. And obviously for this, I'm clearly my opinions will be very minimal. I mean, I'm working with Stephen Quadros and Pat Miltich, two people who are just brilliant at doing commentary. And of course, they know the sport. I, I am not in a position to give too many opinions, period. But even as ho in hosting, you can drive a telecast in a certain way. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're doing a broadcast, you start to get a herd mentality. And if a couple of the broadcasters are one, if it's a three-man booth especially, are driving in one direction, sometimes it's hard not to go in that direction. And you have to be really careful of that because you're right. We, the people doing this, have an impact on the fighters' careers, we have an impact on their fan base, we have an impact on a lot of different things. And while we don't impact who ultimately wins the decision or doesn't, the fact of the matter is, uh, from a marketing standpoint, you do have an impact. And I think people have to always remember that. It's one of my pet peeves in broadcasting. It's one of the things that, in all sports, uh, right now drives me insane, and it is that there is this feeling that everything you say has to have an opinion attached to it. And I really think that's wrong. Again, I, I couldn't agree more now. In, in talking to the fighters leading up to this event tonight, who stood out to you? Who, uh, you know, as a fan, are you most excited to see tonight? Well, you know, that, that one of the things about mixed martial arts, and I say this advisedly because I love boxers, and boxers are great guys, but they, but in general, Boxers don't have as many backstories as mixed martial artists do. It's just the fact. It doesn't make one better than the other or worse than the other. And this event reminds me so much of it. I mean, you have, let's take the Shane uh, Del Rosario fight against Brandon Cash. Perfect example, two big heavyweights. Brandon Cash, who dropped out of college because he had a, had a, uh, a young boy and uh, had to go to work, and then he got into tattoos, and he, he learned how to be a tattoo artist, now he wants to have a tattoo parlor, okay? Very blue-collar kind of guy, rough and tumble. Shane Del Rosario, who lives in Orange County, has a degree in psychology from college, and you can tell he has a whole different approach to life. These are two vastly different men who are going to get in the ring and, and uh, perform uh, as mixed martial artists. That's just a perfect example to me. You know, uh, there are, the, the, the personalities of all these fighters are really, really interesting. Yeah, yeah, and again, there, there are many, many storylines running here tonight. You know, as you said, with Del Rosario, Cash, George Grishel, Billy Evangelista, a lot of hometown, a yeah. lot of hometown flavor. But you're, you're also, like you said, you're 
main coverage is in boxing. We have the next round of the Super Six coming oh, up. Yeah. How do you see that break it down? Well, it's been fun. You know, we had the first two fights, and our, our, the two Europeans did well. Arthur Abraham won very impressively. He's a co-favorite to win the event. And Carl Frotch got a very close decision against Andre Durrell. Could have gone either way. I could have lived through the draw in that fight. They both would have then had one point in the tournament. Uh, and now, uh, Mikkel Kessler and Andre Ward here in California. That could be the best match of the first Ladies round. Uh, Mikkel Kessler is a great fighter, not a good fighter, a great fighter. And he hasn't really been exposed to U.S. audiences as much. Uh, his only loss is to Joe Calzaghe, who arguably is the best super middleweight in the history of the sport. He's great. Andre Ward, the young American who's a, an Olympic champion, is hitting his stride, his peak as a fighter. And I think that Andre Ward and Kessler are the two technically most proficient men in the tournament. I think it's going to be a really excellent fight. Absolutely, and that's going to be up in Oakland. And Andre Ward, for a lot of the fans who may or may not know, also trains with Nick Diaz. And, and Nick goes to work with Andre for his striking. Now, come on. By the way, I'd love to see Nick Diaz in a boxing match. I think it would be really interesting. Just, you know, I mean, he's not going to do that now because he's so enmeshed in his MMA career. But I would love to see if he trained for eight or nine months and boxed. I'd like to see how he did. And he has done boxing. Right. Previously in the past, he does have a pretty good record. And again, you know, Nick is a guy that has the stamina that could do a lot of those things. A couple more questions before we let you go. We know you're working with IBN Sports. I am also here for IBN Sports along with Pro MMA. How has that relationship been? Tell us a little bit about Sam Strayer and Karen Bryant. Well, it's great. You know, I have my Al Bernstein Boxing Channel on IBN Sports, and it's been wonderful because the great thing about this is, you know, you get a chance to send an unfiltered message to the fans out there. You know, uh, I get to cover, we get to cover fights the way I've always wanted to cover them, um, and uh, you get to interview the people you want to interview, and it's been great. And of course, they're, they're greatly supportive. And the fun thing is, occasionally for IBN, I get to delve into the MMA world as well. Sam, of course, in the IBN Fight Channel, do a great job, uh, as you guys do in, in working with them uh, in covering the sport. So it's it's been a great relationship. Obviously, this through this medium that we're on right now, this is where many people are going to get their programming in the future and are getting it now. And the beauty of it is you take away the middleman. You, you can do it. You have to, it brings with it a responsibility to do it right because there, you know you don't have so many filters. But the fact that you don't have those filters means you can, you can I think do a, a sometimes do a better job of getting right to the core of things. Absolutely, and you know as if you don't have enough jobs, I know there's something you and your wife work on and is very close to your heart, and that is your charity. And we definitely want to take every opportunity to get the word out about that. Well, yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a facility in uh, Las Vegas that serves all of those that live in southern Nevada and anyone, really, that would come through uh, Las Vegas. It's uh, called The Caring Place, and it's for those touched by cancer. Uh, my wife um, is a, uh, a stage four breast cancer survivor, and uh, to her everlasting credit, um, when she went into remission from it and she's, you know, had to fight the battle continually over the last five or six years, um, Instead of just saying, well, you know what, I earned the right to do whatever I want in life, she reached out to help others. And her and her oncologist, Dr. Maria and Allison, uh, formed a place called The Caring Place, which was Dr. Allison's dream, to have an oasis for cancer patients away from medical treatment, where they could get all the things that help them heal, like uh, healing arts, uh, nutritional uh, counseling, emotional and uh, psychological support, a, a library that you know gives them information. And we used The Gathering Place in Cleveland, Ohio as our model, and we formed a community board, and my wife and Dr. Allison fo founded this, and it's been remarkable you know it's been an amazing thing and in fact this year um, even though I know we're at a strike force event but I'm gonna mention it anyway because he really helped us uh, we honored Dana White as man of the year and he and his people were remarkably wonderful to us uh, and helped us raise almost close to three hundred thousand dollars this year and this facility gives all these services absolutely free that that is wonderful and like you said with even though we are at a strike force event the important thing to bring up is the caring and we've really focused on that especially myself talking about those kinds of stories. You know, sure. we, you always hear the negative stories in MMA or boxing mm -hmm. or any of the combat sports, but you rarely hear about the times when people go out of their way to do good. So yes. that's why we really wanted to focus on that. Yeah, it's great. And if people want to find out more about The Caring Place, they can go to uh, The Caring Place 
NV, that's like Nevada, NV.org, the caring place, uh, NV.org, and uh, they, can, uh, they can find out more information. Uh, and it's, it's been a great, it's the greatest thing I've been involved with ever for all the other broadcasting things I've done, and uh, uh, this is really the most remarkable.